In this video, video we'll discuss uh, another way in which um, glucose can be metabolized, and that's through the pentose phosphate pathway. So after you watch this video, I want you to be able to list the glycolytic intermediate that enters the pentose phosphate pathway. I want you to describe the products of the pentose phosphate pathway and what they're used for. And then I want you to describe the difference between the oxidative and the non-oxidative phases of the pentose phosphate pathway. So here is the pentose phosphate pathway in a nutshell. And the two important products are ribose 5-phosphate. And the ribose 5-phosphate, that's used to make RNA and DNA and NADH and FADH2 and coenzyme A. It's used to make all sorts of things. In addition, we are oxidizing glucose and those hydrogens and electrons are being saved here in the form of NADPH. This is different than NADH. And this is necessary for uh, biosynthesis of, of reducing precursors into um, a more reduced, more high energy molecules like fatty acids and sterols and things like that. In addition, it's involved in protecting against uh, oxygen, oxygen radicals. Now there's two phases to, uh, N, to the phosphate, pentose phosphate pathway. And the first is the oxidative phase, the phase in which we are both getting our NADPH and our product here, ribose 5-phosphate. And now there's lots of enzymes involved in this. You're not gonna have to know them all, but just know the direct entry to this reaction is glucose 6-phosphate. And so we take glucose 6-phosphate, run it through several reactions. We end up just taking one carbon off that. So one carbon is released as CO2 we are generating two NADPH molecules and uh, one molecule of a ribose 5-phosphate. But one potential problem is that some cells may need a lot of NADPH, and so uh, they need this oxidative phase, but they don't need the corresponding ribose 5-phosphate. They're not building nucleic acids, for example. So the non-oxidative phase of the pentose phosphate pathway is a way to recycle this ribose 5-phosphate back into glucose 6-phosphate. But how do you go about taking a 5-carbon molecule and turning it into a 6-carbon molecule? Well, let's take a look at that. So the non-oxidative phase, what it does, the solution here, is that it takes 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six ribose 5-phosphates into one, two, three, four, five glucose 6-phosphates. And if you do the math, that works out, right? So six times five, six ribose 5-phosphates, six times five carbons is 30 carbons and five molecules of six carbon glucose is five times six is 30. So we, we maintain the same number of carbons by converting six five carbon molecules into five six carbon molecules. Now the reactions that do these are pretty complex. We're interacting two five carbon molecules to generate a seven and a three carbon molecule and so on and so forth. There's some pretty complex enzymes there, but we're not going to focus on that. I am not going to have you remember that. So the net effect, when you combine both the oxidative and the non-oxidative phases of the pentose phosphate pathway, is that you're going to turn glucose into 6CO2 and 12 NADPH. So now make sure you review this video and that you can list the glycolytic, the glycolytic intermediates that enter the pentose phosphate pathway, that you can describe the products of the pentose phosphate pathway and what they're used for, and describe the difference between the oxidative and the non-oxidative phases of the pentose phosphate pathway.